For more on foreign investment in China, we turn to Einar Tengen in Beijing. He's senior fellow at the Taihe Institute and chairman of Asian Narratives. Einar, so much has been written about China's opening up policy over the decades. Uh, so before we get to the future, let's start with today. We just saw how some of these Chinese, Japanese firms are, are in Dalian. Can you talk to us about how much foreign investment we're seeing in China right now? Well, foreign direct investment was down uh, both in 2023 and uh, through the early parts of this year, but it's now going to rebound. And given uh, what's happened to the stock market and the fact that uh, you know China has shown that it's able to manage its economy, you see uh, production numbers up despite a global slowdown. Uh, that will continue. But you know, when people talk about foreign direct investment, I think they think, oh well, China needs money. That's not really the issue. Uh, the issue is they want to bring in uh, top-notch, uh, innovative companies that will really push the domestic market at the same time as they're making money there. Uh, it's all part of this kind of dri uh, driving the economy by innovation, so that you know Chinese companies, also companies here, instead of you know doing commodity, doing large amounts and earning a little bit, they'll be at the forefront where. Uh, the profit margins are much higher, and this will hopefully propel the Chinese economy. Yeah, this is that continued shift that we've been talking about for some time. At the two sessions, uh, which recently concluded, it became pretty apparent that the welcome mat is out, though. I mean, they laid out plans to open up more areas to foreign investment, and they're also scaling back some restrictions in some sectors. Talk to us about these moves. Well, you know, it's a stark contrast. Uh, in the United States, they're still talking about high fences, small yards, um, which, unfortunately, those yards are expanding into the finance area uh, and also social media with TikTok and things like that. China's going the other way around. Uh, they used to have a, a fairly large negative list, and that has been whittled down, and they promised to even do that further. So they're moving in this direction of saying, hey, you're welcome here. As your previous stories indicated, they're rolling out the red carpet, not only financially, but in terms of living in China. So very important uh, in terms of trying to attract the biggest and um, best uh, companies out there. It doesn't have to be biggest. I shouldn't say that. Uh, but they want innovative companies who want to take advantage of the massive Chinese market, huge middle class opportunities. Last year, disposable income grew by 6.2% uh, versus 4.2% in the U.S. This speaks to opportunities. You know, we've heard uh, so much talk here in the United States about de-risking, decoupling, whatever D word you want to use. Um, is there an effort to target investors in specific countries, perhaps maybe not look to the U.S., but to look to other countries? Well, it's it's not it's open to everybody, and there is absolutely no uh, question that it doesn't matter who, where you're coming from. I've noticed that when I'm coming in and out of the airports here, boy, is it much more friendly than it, it was during uh, you know the pandemic time. Uh, people are actually they smile at you, they welcome you. It doesn't matter if you're speaking English or you're speaking Swahili. Um, very very uh, different. But yes, you can see. I mean uh, the. Trade emphasis has switched to ASEAN, which is now the largest trade partner for uh, China. And you're seeing the global south react politically and economically much more positively to uh, China, especially because efforts like the Belt and Road Initiative 10 years on, where they see real progress being made. Uh, so yes, they're interested in the Chinese market, not only because they have technology, but because they want to benefit from joint development. There's this real feeling in the global south that those who own the IP will be served by those who don't. Einer, thanks so much for your insights. Appreciate it. Thank you.